The Galaxy S series is one of the most iconic in any of the smartphone industry. Samsung have battled the likes of LG, Apple, Sony and Motorola in the Western world and is now second to Apple. The Korean powerhouse has created some great phones, but today we're focusing on the Galaxy S series, not the Notes or any of the others. Hey guys, my name is Ryan Thomas with Feltech and this is the evolution of the Samsung Galaxy S flagship. Whilst there are heaps of variants of each, I'm going to try and stick to the main device for each generation. For example, the S6 came out in a standard, edge and plus variant and active variant but I'm going to be talking about the Edge variant because that was the standout one in my opinion. Let's jump all the way back to the original Samsung Galaxy S from 2010. Yes, I was 11 years old when this Android 2.1 beast hit the shelves, and the specs these days would probably be beaten by high-end smartwatches. Half a gigabyte of memory, a 1 gigahertz single core processor, and 8 or 16 gigabytes of storage expandable with a micro SD card up to 32 gigabytes. These specs were pretty good for the time and powered the 4 inch Super AMOLED, yes the original had a Super AMOLED display, 800 by 480 display pretty well. Of course back in Android Eclair days you weren't likely to watch hours of YouTube video or capture hundreds of photos a day. While well, talking about that camera it's a 5 megapixel affair that shot 720p video, about the standard for the time. The removable 1500 milliamp hour battery wasn't huge by any means, but not far off the iPhone 7's battery size from today, and think about how new that is. But remember that these early system on the chips weren't hugely power efficient either, so battery life wasn't incredible. Next up comes the Galaxy S2 with a slightly larger 4.3 inch display of the same resolution. The RAM and core count doubled, enabling a smoother Android 2.3.4 experience, upgradable to Jelly Bean by the way, which is quite a leap forward. And the camera got a needed bump to 8 megapixels and the ability to shoot 1080p video. The removable battery got a small bump too, to 1650 milliamp hours, and the phone felt absolutely huge at the time compared to the rivaling iPhone 4 and 4S, with its half inch smaller display. I remember one or two of my friends having one of these, and they were right beasts. Of course we'd call them ultra compact devices today, but back then they were massive. I actually revisited this phone in 2018, so do check out that video if you're interested, I'll leave it in the cards. Next is the first major change to Samsung's S lineup, the Galaxy S3. Wow, what a mammoth this was. The screen got a huge bump to 4.8 inches at an all new 720p resolution, and this is where Samsung started to get known for big, beautiful displays. Even to this day, the panel doesn't look half bad. The one gigabyte of RAM stayed, but the SoC boosted to quad core. These chips were still Exynos, Samsung's in-house SoC manufacturers, and this wouldn't change for another generation. The battery got a large bump to 2100 mAh and was still removable, which is excellent. The camera stayed the same in terms of specifications with a few software tweaks, and the device got a very round design compared to the S2. The bezels were still quite large, but the overall design was a lot more round. Android 4 Ice Cream Sandwich was the OS of release, and it only got a few updates after that. At least the storage configs got a bit bigger. The Galaxy S4, the first 1080p S flagship. At 5 inches, it didn't grow hugely in size, but the bezels got cut down a lot and the AMOLED panel got even better. RAM doubled to 2GB and 8 core SoCs were introduced and we got the all new 13 megapixel sensor capable of shooting 1080p video. The selfie camera can now shoot 1080p video and the battery is still removable, but now 2600 milliamp hours, which is quite a substantial jump. Storage configurations expanded and some markets even got Qi wireless charging. The S4 may have seemed like an iterative design, but under the bonnet, the S4 was a leap ahead of the S3. It started off life with 4.2.2 and jumped to 5.0.1, officially making for a completely different experience in terms of GUI and software design, one that still holds up to this day in terms of aesthetics. Proceeding the Galaxy S4 was a bit of a game changer, a phone so capable and so versatile that it was let down by the software and nothing else. The Samsung Galaxy S5 was a bit of a marvel. Whilst it was the last properly plastic S flagship, it was also where a lot of the features that you see in today's S8 and S9 came into fruition. A fingerprint scanner, IR blaster, heart rate monitor, weatherproofing and UHD video recording. This 1080p AMOLED panel doesn't officially differ from the S4's on paper, but in reality this thing is incredibly vibrant and incredibly sharp. A very good display. The new 16 megapixel camera now had UHD video recording and could now shoot to a crazy 256GB microSD card, not happening before on the Galaxy S4. 
Samsung picked Qualcomm for its system on the ship. The Snapdragon 801 was half the core count than the previous model, but a lot more powerful and power efficient. It enabled the UHD video recording and 720p at 120fps for the first time. It ended its life cycle on Android 6.0.1, which was one of the best OSs at the time, and had a new aesthetic. The S5 is severely underrated, and even if something as important as a removable battery didn't grow hugely to 2800 mAh if you were wondering, it was still a beast of a smartphone and would be the end of the plastic era Samsungs. And debuting Samsung's glass sandwich, that would be the S6 and S6 Edge. We'll be talking about the Edge variant here, as that is the standout feature. This all new design housed a new era of Samsung engineering and power that would change their perceived value for years to come. The S6 Edge features a curved 5.1 inch QHD Super AMOLED display, regarded one of the best at the time. It was curved on both sides, giving it this Edge name and would enable some shortcuts and gimmicks that few people actually still use on the edged Galaxy S9, which we'll talk about a bit later. The Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge were awkward siblings as they lost the microSD expansion, English protection rating, and a removable battery, all in the name of a beautiful glass design. The 16 megapixel camera now had optical image stabilization and wireless charging was now available due to the glass back across all markets. The selfie shooter got a nice bump in megapixels to five and the phone was regarded as a masterpiece at the time, but I tend to feel that its younger sibling would be much better. Next up is what I regard Samsung's peak, the Samsung Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge. We'll be talking about the Edge model here. It changed the game. The display increased in size to 5.5 inches with almost invisible side bezels and a much more ergonomic design due to the curved glass. It gained IP68 weatherproofing, a truly impressive 3600 mAh battery, microSD expansion, a much better 12 megapixel camera, and was just overall a much more refined version of the S6 Edge. Exynos and Snapdragon had their variants depending on the market here, and in the UK we got Exynos variants. 4 gigabytes of RAM and 32 or 64 gigs of storage were the memory configs with that microSD expansion again, and official fast charging was implemented here too. Shame it wasn't Type-C yet. That beautiful 5.5 inch QHD AMOLED display changed the game for me and showed me just how capable Samsung's display engineers were. Oh, and of course the software went from 6.0 to 8.0, quite impressive over Samsung's lifespans of their phones. The Galaxy S8 is the tick of Samsung's TikTok design. The design was controversial as it changed the awkward to produce for handy to hold tall aspect ratio. A trend that has followed well and creates greater ergonomics with a larger display and something that doesn't feel as unwieldy in the hand. And it's pretty much something found in every 2018 flagship these days, a tall aspect ratio. The rear camera didn't change much, but the front camera got boosted to eight megapixels, which is nice for extra sharpness. Since we're talking about the S8 Plus here, the battery took a small fall to 3,500 million powers, despite the much larger 6.2 inch display. The off-screen buttons finally became on-screen and the haptic feedback was implemented for the hardware feeling home button. It's kind of like 3D touch on the iPhone. Base storage now got bumped to 64 gigabytes and of course you've still got microSD expansion and Samsung kept with their nifty wireless charging, microSD expansion and IP68 water and dust resistance features, but now implemented Type-C and a controversial fingerprint scanner placement. And that brings us to Samsung's most recent releases, the S9 and the S9 Plus. Focusing on the Plus here, Bezels on the extremely similar 6.2 inch WQHD Super AMOLED display got marginally smaller, the design kept relatively the same, processors got faster and the Plus model even got 6 gigs of RAM. The battery stayed the same size relative to the model, but the big change here was the camera. Now two cameras on the S9 Plus. The very 2018 vertically aligned cameras were cool and all, but the main feature of them was the variable aperture, where the iris physically changed size to allow more light into the sensor depending on your lighting conditions. This is present on both models and is just stunning to watch. Ultra fast frame rate video, refined fingerprint scanner placement and stereo-ish speakers are all present on the latest device, making for a truly great multimedia consuming experience and an overall amazing device to use for watching videos, watching streams, and listening to music. Well, that basically covers our quick history lesson in Samsung Galaxy S flagships. Of course, there are minis, actives, primes, pluses, and other variants and models, but it would take me hours to cover them in this video. My favorite is personally the S7 Edge, but what is yours? Let me know in the comments. I'd be interested to hear about that. Samsung has been known for a sluggish software, and that's changed a lot. Their displays and cameras are their standout points, 
and as of the S6 and on, the industrial design has been what differentiates Samsung from its competitors. I really like what Samsung is doing and I, I really hope that they continue what they're doing with keeping the headphone jack and omitting the notch. Anyway guys, that's it from me. I hope you learned something from this video or at least felt a little bit entertained. I want to thank you all so much for watching and a special thanks to my patrons for their amazing continued support. Please do drop a rating, comment and subscribe if you're new around here to never miss a video like this one. And pop over to my social media pages for more behind the scenes. I've been Ryan Thomas for Failtech and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.